episode of the Long Run Podcast is sponsored by Sketches. Hello, it is 7 p.m. here in the UK and 2 p.m. Eastern. And here we are. You are at the Long Run Podcast live and live at stream. Welcome along. Brought to you by the 40 Runs Running Community and our generous sponsors at Sketches. I'm Ian Wilkerson. I'm joined tonight by Chris Ford, Hayden Harbour, Toby Frost and our very special guest, Mr. Thomas Newberger from Believe in the Run, because we're talking about gear, we're talking about kit, we're talking about trainers, what ones you want, what ones you don't want, what's the best thing, what's the what's a waste of money, all that sort of stuff. So if you've got your kit questions, stick them in the chat, which you can register on the Facebook, you can, um, if you click on the link that Toby's um, hopefully provided on the various uh, Facebook there outlets, is. it's just clicked up, and on uh, YouTube as well, if you've got questions for Thomas, the kit guru, then bung them on and we will ask him. Thank you very much, sir, for joining us. What a lovely pleasure it is for us. Is it supposed to be a pleasure for me? Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> He's done, yeah. Well, we'd like to think so. I don't know. <laughs> We're done. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, we can start again. If we get a time, if we just start again. Yeah. <laughs> just roll it again. No, no, oh, we're here, we're here, that's it. I like the <laughs> fact he's got two-footed on Wilco at the front end. I think that's 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 brilliant. That's because we were too busy behind the scenes in the green room, you see. Yeah, if it had been just like, you wouldn't have had time to think, oh, I don't really like this bloke. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. I, I'm, I'm going to be, uh, I keep seeing the comments come up, and I'm not used to seeing that when I'm uh, doing a show or something. So it's it's like a very, it's fun and uh, distracting. So uh, you guys yeah, keep coming. Yeah. The best one to tell us is when somebody starts hammering like Spigo or so, or somebody. That, that's all right. So the really people so with agendas. Watch, yeah, just yeah. yeah, just watch out for them. And evening, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. If you're listening to this live, that's awesome. Or watching us live, or whatever it is. But also, if you're listening to this while you're out running, because uh, if it's news to you that we, we also film this live and then it goes out as a podcast, you can send your emails into Wilco while you're drinking drink. Long run show at gmail.com. Thank you very much. Stick that in and we will at some point between now and 2025 answer it and then talk about it on the show. Um, Wilco, I have to say, I think you've slipped massively in terms of responding to people's emails. I just put it out. I thought I was close oh, to doing that right. job. Well, that's yeah, because I'm... you insisted on clearing out the basket because <laughs> yeah. your OCD couldn't cope with the fact that we have about 12 old emails in there. Yeah. I'm, I'm when I told right. him my work email had 70,000 unanswered one this way, you know, his head exploded this way. Yeah, I couldn't handle that. And um, we've got a big, uh, big shout out to Sketches. Uh, thank you very much for supporting the show. I've got a new shoe in that I can't talk about. I think you guys in the US can, but I can't yet. Which, so uh, big shout out to them. Um also, Which one are you talking about? I'll tell you. I'll don't tell try you to get me trouble, you. <laughs> I've also got another one that I nearly talked about earlier, um, which on Instagram that I'm not allowed to talk about as well. But that, I find that really hard. We'll come on to that. I want to talk to you about that. Um, but yeah, so big shout out to Sketches. Uh, Start Fitness. Uh, you can get 10% off of Start Fitness. Use the code 40 runs. We don't earn a penny out of that. But uh, make sure you follow them or us on Instagram because there's a Garmin giveaway coming this weekend. There's a comp coming your way and you can win a Garmin or something. So watch out for that tomorrow. I think that drops I tomorrow. Saw somebody, I saw somebody on the Facebook group got a pair of spikes for a tenner from Star oh, Fitness. Good. There you go, using the code. So crack on with that. And last thing, we're live at the National Running Show um, uh, in January. So make sure you get your tickets for that. Use the code 40 runs. Right, that's all the plugs done. Whew, it's exhausting, isn't it? So... Um, Hayden, how are you? You look like you're in your house tonight, not somebody else's, which is good news. How are you doing, bro? I'm, I'm doing really well. Glad you chaps around. Yeah, I am actually in my house tonight. Thought I'd um, be on home territory. Got in a bit of trouble last time, so yeah, I'll give yeah, it a couple of weeks before I venture out again. Yeah, you did. And Speak yeah, goes, yeah. now Speak goes, who, by the way, got a lot of love for his own podcast this week when we did his one-to-one about him doing no training and running a 
PB in Amsterdam, uh, which I would recommend, Thomas. So I think if you guys um, want to get over to Europe and do it, that's a good one. It, it actually felt a bit like a, a bit like a major. It's like 16,000 runners. And those guys in Amsterdam, they know how to party. They, it was that's, that's what I think would be the uh, challenge of going to Amsterdam. Isn't the running so much? It's the, the <laughs> oh, yeah, storm, other activities, like, all vices. Well, this is the thing, right? We, uh, I don't know if you see anybody seen the video. If you watch it, check out the second Amsterdam video we did because there's a lot more content in. And part of that was Simon and I, we actually think we put Toby's PB down to him being having some fun in his room late at night with some of those things that Thomas sort of alluded to. And we wanted a drug test him basically because, yeah. I was resting up all evening. He's not resting, Toby. Oh, well, resting night. Up. There's no I'm way you were resting. Yeah. Single guy in Amsterdam. Yeah. No chance. Absolutely no. But I would I genuinely would recommend Amsterdam Marathon and even the half marathon, it was buzzing. Um so yeah, I'd hundred percent recommend recommend that. Right. So um right, where do we go? We go oh my god, the comments already. So guys, uh, if you want to ask a question to anybody, but ideally Thomas, because we've got him on here to oh, bar at him, um, stick them in the comments and we'll try and get to them at some point. Um, and yeah, so keep them coming in and you know, stick it in there with a queue, whatever it is you say. We'll cock and everything. And also, yeah, and also, if you got in the London ballot, this is your opportunity oh. to gloat in the comments. Yeah. So say, yeah, I got in, you lot didn't, I don't care. That's fine. <laughs> it's, it's, that's not very nice, Wilco. It's a bit, I, I know why he's so aggressive, uh, listeners, it's because he's got he's, he's doing the Dublin Marathon tomorrow. And he's all yeah, fired pretty much up. nerves, definitely. Yeah, well, I'm not doing it tomorrow. If I did it tomorrow, then I wouldn't finish. Yeah, we, how Sunday. are you feeling? How are you feeling ahead of Sunday? Don't know. <laughs> I'm not. I've That's... not had a good week. It's been really a bit what? up and down. I don't really? know. I'm just a bit. I think it's because I, it's not my first. I, I've done a race um, overseas before when I've gotten a plane and that, but somebody was looking after everything. So it's the logistics of it that is the big concern. I don't want the plane to be late. I want to be able to pick up my number. I've never had to pick up my number at an expo before. Once all that's done and I'm in the hotel room, that'll be fine. Mm. And then the 26.2, well, it'll be what it'll be. It will look after itself. I'm a little bit, um, a little bit edgy because I had a couple of weeks off with COVID about six weeks ago. But I think, you know, I'd like to think I'm through the best. But you know what it's like, mate. Yeah, you've got uh, edgy Thomas. You guys, uh, firstly, how did you find doing London traveling overseas? But also, just on the tail end, there, you then got COVID as well, didn't you? After yeah, London. you got it good. From London. You got the London strand. Yeah, it was awesome. I mean, the whole thing was incredible. London is just sick. I, coming from the US and and traveling a little bit in Europe, uh, London's probably one of my favorite cities in the world. Uh, it's just it's beautiful. I, I just think it's great, and uh, the marathon was fantastic. Well organized, every the crowd was great. I really enjoyed it, and the way that you finished coming up towards Buckingham Palace was like it's just sick. You turn that corner and you're on that red whatever yeah. that is, and you finish up, and there's the palace. It's it's hard to beat, and the day was gorgeous. I don't know if you always get days like that in London, but what a beautiful day! <laughs> no, <laughs> no, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> but I think on the Saturday, because it was forecast to like be absolutely chucking it down and like the, the gods shine on you, you guys and girls on the day, uh, because it was meant to be terrible weather on the Sunday. Yeah, it was fantastic. And I'll give you a tip that I, that doesn't work in the US. Um, we decided to bring our medals out with us after the after the marathon. And we went to a pub right downtown London. And uh I put my medal on the table and the guy said, Oh, you ran the marathon. You can get a burger and a pint for free. Sweet. Wow. Well, yeah, who was that? So, give, we'll give them a shout out. Cause they might want to sponsor um, the pod. I forget the name. But it was right downtown. Uh, it was like in that little village area where you can buy dildos and stuff like that. But also, <laughs> um, <laughs> what area was you in that? I don't know what you mean. I mean, he's been no, on nine minutes. I'm, you guys obviously know where I'm talking it's about. Got, right? It's got to be Soho. It's got to be Soho. Got to be yeah, Soho. It's Soho. Oh, right. We're about Hayden's superior knowledge about this sort of thing. Like, you can eat your burger and see, like, some leather outfits at the same time. It was fantastic. <laughs> to be fair, normally in London, if you put your medal down on the bar in a pub, you turn around, it'd be gone. 
Yeah, you don't want, yeah, you're in the wrong part of London. That's gone, mate. That's been <laughs> melted down and used right. for something else. Well, it also, like later on, we used it. We were like, this, we went to another restaurant and we were like, uh, can we get a table for six? And they were like, no, we're all booked up and you can wait, you can stand around for 45 minutes. And Meg said, well, we just ran the marathon. I'm not standing around for 45 minutes. And they're like, oh, you did? And we're like, yeah, showed our medals. And they're like, we got a table for you right now. And they cleared oh, off the oh, table. Oh, and oh, Oh, if you're in London, to bring your medal around with you after the race. It's got to be no. like that in Dublin, isn't it? Don't you reckon? Yeah, I mean, no, Dublin. Dublin. They'll be all over it. Yeah, I mean, the Irish are yeah. savages, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he's not holding back, is he? He's going straight. I love him. Go ahead. Yeah, welcome to more. the last long run live stream and podcast. Yeah. 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 Well, my sister in law is <laughs> Irish and she's from Ireland, not like American Irish. She's actually got the accent and everything. Okay. Okay, that's yeah. cool. Yeah, Where about in Ireland? Guys, yeah. She might be listening. She won't be. Mm. She won't be. She, she won't, won't be. listen when I'm in front of her, so. <laughs> <laughs> right, go on. Let's have a look. So, what well, we got? Um, oh, who's looking after the comments tonight? Is it you, Hayden? No, I thought it was meant to be a Wilco, but I can have a look at them if you want. Oh, well, nobody well. knows what they're doing. We've this got is a lot of love for Wilco. A lot this of good luck for Wilco messages. Yeah, thank you. I t- yeah, thanks ever so much. All the, all the love about... Um, my efforts this weekend. Thanks ever so much for everybody. Um, Do you live in Cotswolds, Glastonbury. This pod is going to make me buy more kit. Yes, it will. Yeah. Evening from Glenn. Glenn's, yeah, well done, Glenn. Hello, everybody. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, my God. There is a lot there. Right, i tell you what. Why don't we dive in with Thomas and have a chat? Yeah. Because and, and Hayden can actually like want to listen to us work. today. <laughs> right, Main okay. man's here. So, Thomas... Um, could you before before we sort of dive into sort of like um various questions about kits and things like that, can you just for people who don't know who you are and your backgrounds, can you just sort of like introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, uh I've been running for a while now. Uh I got into it not through uh the track and field entry, but more the you know, got got a little overweight, got a little sloppy and decided I wanted to fix that. So got into running. Um, started a website called Believe in the Run, turned into podcast, YouTube channel, Instagram stuff. And, uh, you know, we just started building up the media, brought a couple other people along. So we have a pretty good team here. You know, we've got Megan, Robbie, Brandon, who are full time. We got some, uh, other help from like Jarrett and a bunch of different reviewers that help us put together all our gear and shoe reviews. Um, yeah. So if you're, Pretty much looking to find out what gear is coming, what gear you want. It's a little bit different. I think that uh, we actually have a pretty decent audience in the UK, but the timing of things and when things are available and coming out seems to be vastly different uh, between us. So sometimes I would think it would be really frustrating to be in the UK reading some of our reviews on shoes that you might not see for six months. Uh, Well, I'll give you an idea, right? So the, the shoe that I'm not allowed to talk about from Brooks, right? It's just it's, it's on its way. I think some of some of you guys already have put some content out on it. I'm being very careful here, by the way. And then it doesn't actually come out for sale until January. The stuff that I've got, I, I don't, I'm not allowed to put out until November. But that's not on sale till January. And it's the same with like somebody was commenting on a video of mine today about the um, Fuel Cell Rebel Three, right? It's nowhere, but you can buy it on Running Warehouse. You can, you know, go over to Milan and buy it, whatever. But here, nobody's got it. And it, it's, 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 but we get stuff from like Nike before you guys. So it's really weird how it all. Yeah, it's just sometimes. How does that all happen then? Sorry. Well, yeah, I can tell you typically what's happening right now. COVID kind of changed it. Originally, we got all the Nike stuff first, but because China is, can ship to the UK more easily than it can to uh, the United States. What we're seeing is kind of like the reflex of, like think about air freight right now, if you want to get something to the US, they're putting a lot of these shoes on planes to get it over to us. And that's expensive, it kills their margin. So they're saying, well, we could release in Europe now instead and kind of release out there first and see how that goes. So you're seeing some of that where uh, certain brands are trying it. They're just saying, okay, the shoe's ready. It, we can put it on trucks and get it over to, or trains 
you know, and get it over to, to the, those countries. So it's kind of, there's a little bit of a flux in it right now. Yeah, that kind of makes sense. Um, I know, like, just with, like, sketches, for example, that I hope they're all the same, but they're, they're struggling with inventory into the UK. So it's, it's like, it's just a problem, it seems like. You're right, ever since COVID, I think it's just I sort of chucked everything up in the air and it's, like, landed and they're like, okay, this is now the world we live in. Let's try and do this there and that there and, and that kind of stuff. But I still think they're kind of learning from COVID and sort of what's happened with that as well. But it has kind of messed all that sort of stuff up. Um, hey, did you get anything out of any of the questions? Yeah, I've got loads of questions. Are we going to do them the quick fire round now or are we going to... Oh, no, no, no. Let's, let's butter him up. Right, let's, let's, let's him. make him feel homely and yeah. welcome. Yeah. Well, I'd like to know from Thomas how he got sort of like interested in the sort of oh. like the gear aspect of... Um, What's that? You know, well, if you I think Wilco's asking me if, how I got into the gear and yeah. how, how it happened. It, it actually kind of was in a backdoor way. I've always been into gear. Growing up, I was into skateboarding, so I was real into like collecting decks, stickers, wheels, the clothing, all that stuff. It was a lifestyle thing, and so when I got into running, it became a very similar thing. It's not just about what I wear when I run; it's the whole lifestyle of running and stuff like that. But originally when we started the website, it was, I was raising money for a charity because I was doing I I don't know if you guys, it's, you have the Trans Alps in, in, um, I think on your side of the country, on your side of the world. Over here, we have the Trans Rockies. So it's over the Rocky Mountains. And I was doing a, um, it's a little over 200 mile run over the top of the Rockies. And I was decided I'd raise money for a child abuse center. And so I started a website and logged my training. And this is back in 2009. There wasn't like, I don't even know how involved Facebook was at that point or how involved I was in Facebook at that point. But I started logging my training. There wasn't a lot of places to see people's training. There was a site called Daily Mile we used to be part of. But uh, as I was logging my training, I would tell people what I was wearing. I was like, well, I'm wearing this shoe and I'm trying out this pack this weekend because I want to see if it'll work for this, this long uh, run. And the more I talked about the gear, the more the audience went up and the more the audience went up and asked questions about it, it started to just become like, Hey, what do you wear for this? What are you doing for this? Have you done anything? And then uh, at the time, a couple brands started noticing what I was doing and they're like, Hey, we're going to send you some product. Can you just mention it? And this is back before now it's like, they just, that's just the way business is done. Like they go on Instagram, find somebody who's got some followers, dump some stuff on it. But back then, 2009, 2010, like I remember the first time I got some for free, I was like, what is this? I've hit the gold (laughs) mine. It was a stick of body glide. I don't know. Do you guys have body glide over there? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right. It was a stick of body glide. And I was just like, Holy cow they're sending me free product. And then it just started billing. I got some sock and shoes. I got some, you know, hiking poles, backpacks, shirts, clothing. And I just got into it and was just like, Hey, this is fun. I like it. I'm getting gear. I'm getting shoes. And like, let's just keep this rolling. So for, for you, Fordy, Thomas was a bit of a trailblazer then. He did, he was doing for stuff, you know, when you first yeah, started, honestly, doing it, was this somebody yeah. you looked up to? hundred percent, hundred percent. I've said it before, right? So what Thomas, Thomas does and, and the team, um, but what Thomas does it, it is a standalone product out there because it's, it's informative and, and the most important part, it, it brings that fun element to it because you think some of the stuff's quite, quite boring, right? You're talking about socks and things like that, but they make it, they make it fun and they make it enjoyable and they make it engaging and it's relatable. Like I always say to which is effectively the key market audience. It's just everyday runners, normal people, right? There's no point, really, giving something to an elite runner and going, you go and do a video of your neck, because it's, it's hard to relate to that. So what, you know, Thomas does and has done for years is make it relatable and engaging and easy to understand. So if I'm looking for, yeah, a new pair of shoes, maybe I've just got, I just had a call just before this with somebody who's just got a ballot place for London, and he's like asking, well, what do I do this, what do I do that? You know, he Googles the shoes. The chances are it's really high you're going to get a video from Believe in the Run, which is going to give you the value you want in terms of what that shoe's like, what it's going to do for you. Is it any good? But it, it, it delivers it in a fun way, right? Mm-hmm. 
And that's why, it's, that's why I absolutely love what the guys do. You know, with them and with what Mike's doing, I've said it before, and then obviously we've got Ben over here as well. But, you know, they're just bringing that, that element of fun to it. So it's not just like dull, boring stuff. And it's, mm. it, you know, I mean, Thomas has been on here for 20 minutes. We've been rolling around the place laughing. You know, you can, it, it comes across. It's just natural. And it's, it's hard to find that. And that's why I think it is so popular. And as you say, it reaches across to over here. So like when we did the shakeout run in London, like they shut down London, the West End for that morning. Right. It was mental. The people, the amount of people that turned up, which we shouldn't be surprised at. But there's always that unknown when you're coming, especially to a new country. Um, but it just shows you the, the reach of Believe in the Run, that it appeals to a massive audience because, you know, they're connecting with real runners. And I think that's mm. that is the that is the key to it all. Uh, and yes, um, yeah, I, I've always looked up to them. And if I could if I could package up what those guys do over there and bring it over here, then I will. I was talking funny enough. Hayden and I were chatting this morning about this, you know. A, a store somewhere or somewhere people just run and just come and hang out and and you know we just talk crap basically we drink coffee probably late at night toby would bring some of his friends over but we just literally hang out talk rubbish review some shoes talk about this and that and have club runs going out of it it would just be an amazing thing right to bring a community aspect to somewhere like that and that's the whole point of, you know, of everything is just that community aspect. And I saw that again so strong in, in London when, you know, we had the great opportunity of meeting the guys. It was it was that community aspect of, of all runners just turning up and, and just having a laugh, really. Um, well, that's the, yeah, that's the so, thing as well. People, sorry, mate. The thing is, people may be watching this thinking, oh, this is what you do. You review things. That's a bit boring. That's only a what? A tenth of what you do? I know you don't want to talk about it all night because there's loads, but you do so much. But going back to what you said about the skateboarding thing, I listened to something you was on a long time ago, and you wanted to bring that whole thing of gathering together the skateboarders, where they all get together, they all have fun, they just hang out. And you've almost taken that into the running side of things and built it for people that don't know from whereabouts you are, built these offices and these things where people just go and just hang out, have fun. They go out for a run daily now, isn't it? It used to be weekly, then it was... Now I think it's daily. They just talk about things, as you said, have a coffee, have just absolutely it's just bringing fun to everything. And mm. that, that's what you've brought to this whole running scene. It is. It's, it's something to be admired. It's absolutely fantastic. Well, well I, I appreciate it. We actually sat down and uh, we thought, thought about our values and what, what we wanted to bring and why we're doing what we're doing as a team. And one of our main, uh, there's a couple of goals that, are, that we have as far as the values are. One of them is authenticity. So like when we review something, even if we're working with a brand, like right now we're doing a project with New Balance for the New York City Marathon. We tell them up front when we're working with them, we're like, hey, if you put out a crappy shoe while we're doing this, we're going to have to tell people it's a crappy shoe because yeah, that's more important to us than getting to work with you again. Mm. They, like if we lose our audience, we won't be working with you anyway. Exactly. So we have to kind of tell the brands, hey, authenticity is important to us. The Are they receptive to that? Want... Say what? Are they receptive to that? Oh, yeah, very much. Yeah, they love it. So they That's don't, they so they, you know, they're not. I used know... to think, so I'll, I'll tell you a, a, a thing and, and then I'll, I'll get on to the second value that we had. But when I first went, there's a thing called the running event in Austin, Texas. And I started going there before they kind of had people like us going there. Now you'll go there and you'd see Kafuzi, you'll see running warehouse, you'll see, you know, a lot of people, but the, I was afraid the first time I went, cause I was like one of the only guys that was there that wasn't a shoe store buying and making orders for the year. And there were, we did get ignored by people, but then I could pull aside by someone and a brand. I was afraid that they were going to be like, we hate you. You talk shit about our shoes. And I was like a little nervous. And one of the guys pulled me over. He goes, man, I really love your videos because internally we will say that to our designer. We'll say that to our corporate office. We'll be arguing for that same point. When we say it, they don't listen. When you guys, we pull up yeah. your video and you guys say, hey, this heel counter sucks. It's giving me blisters. It's the shoe lift. The fit's not right. And we show that to our team who's been saying, no, that's not a problem then it validates it. So all of a sudden we were like, wow, they actually do. They'd rather us be honest 
and take that feedback, then us be like, there are, you can go to some review sites and they just yeah. take their pants down and tell you how great everything is. And, you know, and I'm just like, not every shoe is great. Yeah. There are a lot of them are really good. Mm. And we get down to nuance when we start picking the best, but there is crap out there that I've, put on and I'm going to head out for a run and I have to take it off. Cause I'm like, I'm not wearing this. So do you, did that take time to sort of like develop that um, ability to sort of like differentiate between what's great and what's not, you know, with, with the more experience that you, you, you know, yeah. the more stuff that you wore, you became more knowledgeable about the subject and were able to give more sort of forthright opinions. No, I, th I think there's a different way. How learning how to talk about it is different. So when I first, did it i didn't know how to articulate why i didn't like a product yeah. i'd be like I, i'm running in this and something's not right about it i don't know how to describe it over time our team has gotten really good at saying this doesn't work for me and here's why and here's what i think we could do to improve it on the next yeah. go around and that's the kind of feedback now a lot of the shoe companies are already developing for 2000. 24 at this point so when i do a review and i say hey this heel counter sucks it's not too often that that's going to make it in time for the next iteration they may have figured it out for themselves and fixed it but what it does is they start to follow like the trends of what people like like you'll notice a lot a few years back there was not gusseted tongues in a lot of shoes he loves now, a gusseted tongue <laughs> Because we, we're like, every time we reward them, we're like, we love a gusset at time. And, and you look inside the shoes that we get yeah. sent, and they're there. But It's true. It's yeah. true. But I kind of went sideways on that. What yeah. I wanted to talk back about is you're talking about the fun element of what we do. Yeah. Um, that's one of our core values is if it isn't fun, we don't want to do it anymore. And that also plays into the reviews and the stuff because, you know, sometimes you just get a bunch of shoes and, you're like, this is not fun. Like yeah. I got to review a shoe that I don't like or something like that. So that's not exactly what we're talking about when I say, if it's not fun, don't do it. But in general, like what we're doing as a whole, I always tell the team, if you're not having fun, this is, then we're going the wrong direction. This should be, yeah. we should be doing something that everybody wishes they were doing because we're exactly. just having a good time. That, and that comes, but that's that comes across seriously. That comes across like when you're throwing shoes over like a, a whatever you was that water that you was throwing over to chuck to chuck chucking the shoe over. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> tell, tell us about that. What was that all about? Uh, so, uh, well, Thomas, you tell him. But the, the first impressions they do it. Go on, you tell him what you're doing yeah. with the first impressions. So it, it actually started a long time ago when we do video reviews. I used to when finished throw the shoe at the camera. And our camera, uh, it got better and better. And I felt less and less like throwing a shoe at <laughs> an expensive camera. But when, so we kind of translated it to um, when we do our first impression videos, well, Robbie and I will be walking or Megan and Robbie will be together or Megan and I will be do doing it together. And at the end of the first impression, we'll football toss and American football toss the shoe to the other person. And, um, it's always a gamble if they're going to catch it or not. So it, it provides a little bit of suspense. And it's funny because it actually pisses people off. I don't understand why. But... They, do. they get really annoyed. I've seen the comments. They get really yeah, pissed. I, I think, you know, they get mad. I don't know if it's a cultural thing in one of those countries where you don't throw shoes. Yeah. I, don't know. I don't know. It's, it's great fun. It's great fun. Now, there, there was one I can't remember down on the seafront and they were trying to, he was trying to see if you could throw it over the water and he was like, does he do it? Doesn't do it. And he was there. It was, no, it's good. It's, again, it, it's, it's that whole, that whole funny. It, it's funny. You, you talk about that because, you know, one thing that I get, some people tell me off, you know, too negative or too, you know, or whatever, or, you know, I, I joke about Brooks, for example, but the fact, I, I mean, I've been giving Brooks a really hard time, right? All the guys. Because I used to wear them. <laughs> yeah, basically, right. But I've, I've nailed them because they're over here, right? You go into a running store because they get them so cheap from Brooks. Nine times out of ten, the person's going to right walk out of Brooks, which is fair enough. It's a good model, fair play to them, right? But their shoes are still designed from like 1987, right? There's, they haven't changed, right? The ghost has not changed. So I give them a bit of a hard time. But in fairness to them, they've sent me another shoe to, to review. So 
you know, you've got to give them kudos because, as you say, you're giving them an independent view, which is only opinion. And, and, and I like the fact what you said there to to quantify, to try and quantify why you don't like something and also give suggestions about how it could be made better. I think it's a really, really good point. And I've tried to do get better at doing that because it's very, it's very easy to say, well, it just doesn't work because of... Uh, but to try and quantify that, I think, as you say, it comes with experience. And again, that's what you guys always, I think, from your videos, you always try and say, well, if they did this and try to put a little bit of that on it, you know, that could probably probably work which is which is good i think we go we're, we're 30 minutes in should we go i got a question for you before we leave that brooks one. Oh, here he goes all right yeah, yeah. Go on. <laughs> don't get me in trouble right. so i'm guessing that one of the problems you have with brooks is they're boring right yeah like, like on another level boring right and you know that they are the number one running shoe that yep. ghost sells more than anything how much do you think those designers and the people working there want to build something exciting but they're yeah. like focus on the ghost that's paying yeah. the bills yeah yeah exactly i, I agree i agree 100 percent, and i say it all the time they have got some amazing people there but as you say it's a gravy train right so they are they're killing it and they're making some, a fair play to me if it was my business i'd do the same i was like yeah just keep knocking them out keep and they and the bless them they tried with and they made a really good shoe with the hyperion tempo but how long has it taken them to come out with the second version of that Oh, I mean, it's, it's, yeah. A, it's a, yeah, it's, so they, they've got it in them. They just need to, I think we just need to go in there, give them all a load of tequila and take some of uh, Toby's friends in from, they helped him out in Amsterdam, rock the place out and see what they can come up with. Cause I think mm -hmm. they've got it. You know, that there is elements of it there. They just need to be like, let loose. Um, and, and I can I just touch on one, one other thing? I was going to ask Thomas quickly before we go into the silly questions. And this no, is serious. Man. They're very constructive, serious very questions. questions. They're all construct, sorry, constructive questions. Yes. Uh, what people might not realise as well is obviously there is other podcasts out there, not just mm. a long run show. And because I think we're, we're the biggest in the world. So I take it you're one of the drops, probably second biggest in the world. Second biggest in but the world. The most important thing with the drop, and this is this out trumps everything. And you've got to tell us just for a minute or so, you got to interview. The oh, absolute yeah. ultimate runner, in my opinion. Are you talking about Toby? So if people don't know, obviously, on with your podcast, you do you got a lot of high class interviews, and you actually got to interview the man, the goat that is Mr. Kip Chogi. What was that like? Okay, uh, my pits were sweating <laughs> like, when we first started. Okay. Um, it was it was it was actually super exciting. So we didn't get much advance notice that we were going to get to interview him. And when we did, we were like, okay, we got to make something out of this. We got to. This is a big deal. Like at this time too. Now you've seen him interviewed by a few people. I had never seen him do any interviews at this point. No, I, I'm literally seen never nothing. Yeah. So I'm like, holy crap! I get to talk to basically the Zen master of running that is coming down from like the mountaintop to let me talk to him. Robbie comes over, Widefoot Jarrett comes over, Megan's there, we set up the computer. You can't see them, but they're all like on the other side, just geeking out uh, on the computer when I get to talk to them. So the energy is really huge. And I'm getting on, I'm like, I'm gonna fuck this, oh, sorry. I'm gonna mess this up. And- uh, Thank you for minutes. Yeah, you know, so he comes on, he pops on, and you see him, and I'm like, there he is. I'm actually talking to this guy. Like, I'm, like, shaking. Watch the first bit of that interview, and you can tell I don't calm down and relax until, like, a certain point. I forget where it was, but you can kind of see where I just kind of finally realized I'm talking to a human being. This is yeah. This is going to be okay. We'll, we'll This will work. But, uh, yeah, and but it was – a phenomenal experience and the ripple effect afterwards, after we hung up and then we go, oh, geez, that just happened. And we start putting it together and we put it out. We did a live YouTube to, to watch it. And uh, it was, it was insane. Brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant. Absolutely. I just can't. Right, yeah, so just, I, can, I can definitely empathize with that because, you know, in my professional capacity, I've, um, I've interviewed some very famous people as well. And then sometimes you are just, you're quaking in your boots and you just, and you saying, 
he's just a human being. That is exactly the attitude that you have to have. It's just like, it's just me and this other guy, you know, and I've just got to talk to him for five minutes or whatever. But it can be, oh, it can be so intimidating. Yeah, but, it's, it's, you know, and it, it comes across as just like the nicest bloke. In the, he's such a brilliant ambassador for the, for the sport, isn't he? Yeah, he's absolutely, in your terms, I guess, in your country, you say he's absolutely lovely. So you know, he's a ledge. Yeah, he's a ledge. <laughs> Certainly. Um, but no, he was just it, it was just it was fun. And it's funny because we got a, actually another chance to interview him. And it, you could tell it was in a different circumstance where he's like on a press tour. So it was like you had five minutes with him and then he got in the, on the computer for the next five minutes with someone else. And you could tell he was just dazed and like, oh, I got to answer this question one Thanks more time meal. kind of thing. So it was great to be able to get that first interview because I felt like we got time to talk to him. We were the only person he was talking to. And I have to say, uh, I'm going to mention that Koros uh, set that up for us. So I really appreciate um, the Koros GPS watch. Uh, you know, they, they were the ones who they had signed Kipchoge. They lined it up. And when they went out there, they're like, this is the people that we want to interview you, which was us, which was like, Really, that that blows us away. But it was yeah, amazing. They they basically call us and said, "Would you like to interview Kipchoge?" <laughs> mm, yeah, maybe. Yeah. All right then. I've got an interesting yeah. fact about Kipchoge, and it, and it's in reference. Somebody it says xxxxxxx on the live stream has fully recovered from his last blog, <laughs> claiming Tottenham are the greatest team in the world. He needs medical help, right? Kipchoge, people, is a Spurs fan, so Tottenham Hotspur. Tottenham. Yeah. It's the biggest, so they have won some trophies. It is the biggest club in, in the world. And Kipchoge generally supports Spurs. You look it up, it's true. I'm not making it up for once. Um, so there you go. That's the, that's the moment. Because that's what I said. We, we, I can't remember which podcast we did. We all said, what would we ask him in the in an elevator or in a lift if you if you yeah. like, got in there with him? And they all said something serious. And I just said to him, I'd want to know where he thinks we're going to finish in the league. I mean, that's that's the only thing I'm interested in tonight. So, yeah. So, there you go. Interesting. His answer would be, no soccer team is unlimited. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Right. Are we going to go two-footed on, on him, Hayden? Are you ready for this? Yeah, we've got a few questions for him. Yeah, that we need to be asking. Are, the are, they, are, the, are they the serious team, ones or are they the lightning round ones? They're the lightning round ones. Okay, right. So... We can go serious. Right, we can do whatever you want, mate. Whatever oh, you mate, want. Mate. You, let's just... Because we haven't done this for ages. The no. really expensive titles that we, we paid millions, millions and worked on hours to do. Right, you ready, Tom? This is going to blow your mind. I think you need some of this on the drop. Check these out. Go on, Tay, roll it. There you go. Was you impressed? Yeah, that was lightning and everything. <laughs> yeah, they're really good. They get they get you in the mood, get you nervous. It's a bit like interviewing Kipchoge. You're going to start sweating and everything now. But I'm, I, I already feel it. <laughs> These are really easy, straightforward ones and designed for our American friends. Right, let's get in. Waffles or pancakes? Waffles. Toppings? Uh, whipped cream. <sighs> nice, nice. East Coast? I know you get asked this loads probably. East Coast or West Coast? Of England? <laughs> no, the United States. The United States? I'm going to go East Coast. So you was born West, you were raised in West I Coast. Was, you I was born on East. the West Coast, yeah. All right, but brilliant. I'll go what East Coast because you can hit more states. You only get like three on the West Coast. But the weather's worst. Yeah. <laughs> right, let's go. Anchovies or pineapple on your pizza? Pineapple. And I've got to throw one in from a viewer here, from a, someone who's asked a question, I mean, Vince Warren. Yorkshire pudding neither, or waffles? But I, I'm going to say neither on the pineapples and anchovies, but if I had to go with one, I'd go with the pineapple. And what was the next question? Uh, one of our, uh, Vince Warren has asked, Yorkshire puddings or waffles? Do you know what a Yorkshire pudding is? We've learned what it is because we've been talking about it on our podcast. <laughs> I think I would like it. So I'm going to go Yorkshire pudding. There you go. Vince has one for you. Right. Instagram, YouTube, or TikTok? Mm. I'd say YouTube. YouTube. Yep. Yeah, good choice. Darth Vader, hero or villain? Hero. Absolutely. And let's go have our last one then. 
We've got to see marathon wise London, New York, or Chicago. <sighs> My first New York was a disaster. So I'm going to have to go with London, but I want to be able to switch that question back after in, in, after the New York City Marathon this year. It might trump London. Everybody says that New York's the best, but the first time I ran it, it was not. London was pretty we, rad. We love a London answer. Well done, right, Tobe? Let's get us back. Good job, boys. I, Good great job. Job. I thought that was going to be a lot more painful. No, oh, it's, it's, it's pretty easy. You still won't have a 20 minutes to survive, though. Yeah. Right. You're you're not getting out 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 out. Now, you touched, upon, you touched upon the fact that um, New York, three weeks now, is it? Uh, is it no, three? it's not this weekend. It's the next weekend. Right. Okay. So how's it going? How's your training going, Ed? You know, it's. I mean, obviously, London was, what, the, four weeks ago? And uh, so we're kind of just – I. Just kind of tried to recover. I got the COVID after it. Tried to get back into running. So I had to take a little extended break. But I'm just starting to feel back to normal. But we're, we're running New York. Like, I'm going to run it with Jarrett. We're running it. We got permission to video on the course. So we're going we're gonna to run it more for fun. Just kind of do some video, show people what it's like to run the New York City Marathon, give that experience. And uh, really just want to have fun. And then... Uh, reloading for Houston in January for a goal race. Wow. So um, you said your first New York wasn't, didn't go to plan. What happened? I did the rookie mistake of going out way too fast. Oh. I, it's real easy. It's you've been waiting around that has a later start. I finally got out there. The crowds are insane. You're running with thousands of people. I went out and ran one of my best half marathons at the time got up to mile 16 and lactic acid in my legs was just incredible. And I just kind of like made my way in, but I felt like I missed, like people were like, isn't it crazy when you hit Manhattan and the crowds are yelling and everything. I was like, I just was like blacked out in tunnel vision, just trying to get, get done. So uh, it, it was a wasted, I, I feel like I wasted that. It was fun to complete it, but it was kind of wasted. I didn't get a chance to really enjoy. So it's just the first the time Marathon. you've been back since then. The the first time I'll be running New York since then, yeah. Oh, so it's you know it's something that you know you got unfinished business then. So. Yeah, I mean unfinished business, but I'm not racing. Like I said, we're just having fun. Yeah. But, I have to, um, I have to just, say, go on, Milko, sorry. No, you go on, mate. Go on. No, I just, he meant you, Thomas said about running with his mates. I, I don't know if any of you guys know, but Thomas, I, I want to know a little bit about your running club. Uh, now, the name of the running club is, is amazing. It's called, uh, <laughs> the faster, <laughs> now I'm going to say, in, I want to say in English, English, and then you're going to say in American English. It's the Faster Bastards. Yeah. Now, what, you, what do you, you say? Faster Bastards. There we go. It's the name of his running club, which I just think is, is incredible so tell us about that when how did that come about and, and all that sort of stuff so uh it's actually this is our 10th year of having the faster bastards uh i ended up starting it as do you guys know what a ragnar is <laughs> yeah yeah, so it. It. yeah well i i did it because they had it for one one two years here um and then and it was awesome it's like the best experience ever um and then they could covid and all that sort of stuff they were then going to bring it back and now we was talking about it last week and the week before the company that were doing it over here uh, uh do the Brighton marathon and they kind of got some big financial problems allegedly we'll come should be all right <laughs> allegedly allegedly i'm saying allegedly and there's been reports it's no defense, this, mate. <laughs> basically they, they owe loads of people money from a cancelled ragnar event over here mm. Okay, so not very popular over there. No. <laughs> anyway, they were doing it over here in the U.S., and I put together a team with a friend, uh, and we decided just we were, like, trying to come up with team name, and we kept drinking, and we, cocktail after cocktail, and finally we landed on Faster Bastards. And uh, <laughs> the logo originally, if you see the original logo, I made it from – there's a beer over here that's called Natty Bo or National Bohemian. That has a character. And I was like, why don't we just make a dead, um, a dead Natty Bo as our, our mascot. So that's where it started. The team uh, ended up doing, we, we started going like um, 
doing beer miles together and just little things, but it wasn't like a regular weekly run for a while. And, uh, through a little bit of time, I met another guy and I was like, Hey, he's like, what's this faster bastards. And I was like, that was my running team. And so he's like, let's, let's do something with this. And I was like, great, let's do it. And we started doing like weekly runs and then, uh, it's turned into somebody else was like, Hey, I'd like to do a Wednesday run. We're like, all right, let's add that to the schedule. Another guy, John Ober was like, I'd love to do a trail run on Thursday night. So we did that. And then it just, it's now grown into, we have it, you know, almost a run every day of the week. And, um, it's been going on for 10 years and we've had people get married that have been in the group. We have babies that were born from the group. We That's have, so cool. you know, it's, it's just been insane. Nice. So that is so cool. Um, I've got a quick, I've got some questions for Thomas, but do you want to okay. do, yeah, I'm going to proper grin him. He's not getting out of here for free. Um, do you want to, do you want to pick up some of the stuff that's, Apart from the beautiful girls are here comment, I think Toby's now removed. I mean, we could talk about that. Yeah, that, that's all that talk about Amsterdam, I think. Yeah, that's Toby. That's your no, that's your friends from Amsterdam. Um, but Hayden, have you got anything specific out of the, yeah. the thing? Or well, let's I have just... a look. So we got Gavin Braden has asked me a question for Hayden. What are the hotels in Chicago ridiculously expensive? Looking at twenty twenty three, can't see anything less than four hundred a night. I booked mine a long time in advance. They weren't that sort of money, but they are expensive. They've got the monopoly. They know everyone's going to be going there. Um, Yorkshire pudding on waffles. With a, yeah, we know the <laughs> That's a strange old question, that one is. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> a lot, lot of love for Thomas here. Love the way that he's stuck to his core values. Loads of love and loads of love for Wilco coming in for Sunday. Mm. Loads of good luck messages. 60% chance in Dublin. Yeah, 60% uh, chance, Wilco. 100%. I've got sixty percent less hair, so you have. You've done well. You, you've gone. You've gone. Is that is that the... haircut? <laughs> trying, trying to... Oh, there was a zero drop question as well. Yeah, uh... Robert Smith has said, "Can zero drop questions prevent IT band injuries? I've heard they take pressure off the knees. And if so, what are the best zero drop shoes out there?" Thomas, I'm going to give that to you because you guys. I don't know why Ultra over here don't. Uh, they don't really respond to you know the sort of stuff that we do but you guys seem to do quite a bit with them i would fair to say isn't it with, yeah with i mean shoes. there's ultra there's topo has some zero drop other shoe companies have dabbled in it i don't know it's it's not really my bag like i don't i don't know the drop if you ever really take a look at what five millimeters looks like or 10 millimeters looks like and you extend it over the distance of a of a shoe a normal size shoe does it make that much difference I don't know. I like a little drop. I like a lean forward, but I, I, the only, I, nothing is going to cure anything or take pressure off your knees. You're still impacting the ground, whether it's zero drop or barefoot, or you have a 10 millimeter drop shoe on. I, I that you do leg strengthening exercises. Yeah. If you're worried about that and stretch, yeah, exactly. Get in the gym, right? Strength, yeah. strength and conditioning. I'm not saying we'll solve everything, but it'll give you a, it'll give you a head start on worrying about your shoes. Personally, I mean that's that's where I'll go. But look, like everything, try it, see how you get on. But transition into it, yeah. Because if you're going even from like a five mil drop to zero, that will that will tear your calves up. So yeah, just transition into it real slow and um, just watch out. But yeah, it's always. I mean, it's, definitely try it. I mean, there's there's no downside to it. I would say. Mm. Right. Yeah, so I mean, if, gonna, it, if it works for you, it works for you. But I, I never liked those Vibram five finger shoes. Never bought a pair. Nope. I tried them on one time and I thought I looked like a gorilla. So I <laughs> took them off. Uh, yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. Mind you, there was a guy in Amsterdam who beat Simon, which was brilliant news. Um, he ran the barefooted. He came past us and we were like, dude, because it, it, you got the tram lines in, in Amsterdam. And I mean, the guy was just, and then it was so good to just to see him steaming past Simon at the end and like sort of smile at him and say, I've got no shoes on. And then crack it through. Brilliant. What a legend. Absolute legend. Right. I've got 10 minutes. So this is my section now. I'm just going to geek out. Are you ready? Yeah, go on in. You ready? Yeah, just sit back, boys. Relax. Because we're going in. Right, Thomas, you ready? Gonna I'm ready. Pressure. Right. So now you've got to remember all your friends over in the US, they won't be listening to this because this is, you know, we're massive in Malta, Peru, Hungary, US, not so much. We're only, we're not taking over there yet. We will eventually. But so you can say what you like. 
Favourite shoe of 2022? Don't hold back. Uh, Never Blast 3. Yeah, I'm with you on that one. Favourite shoe, though, of all time? Ooh, favourite shoe of all time? I think it has to be the original Vaporfly because it just changed my world. That's true. Number one. So you do you mean the 4%? Yeah, the four, the original yeah. Monza Blue, four yeah. percent that came out. It changed the world, changed running, just changed everything. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll make you right on that. Right, which brand is killing it in twenty twenty two? Oh, I think Asics, and I, I mean my my probably tops this year have been. We were just going over like our favorite shoes of the year, and Asics and New Balance, and those are probably been my two favorite big brands yeah uh, this year what about adidas any love for adidas any love for them i like it but they're kind of hit and miss like the boston 11 i think is cool. a crap shoe yeah i think that um even the audio 7 there's some old timers that still love that kind of feel and that's, that's just... you wilco <laughs> <laughs> wash your mouth out <laughs> <laughs> and for me it, it's a little it's it's just it's of that style of shoe. It's really good, but it's just it's an old style of shoe. Yeah. No, I mean, I mean, I think I think the Adios Pro Three, amazing. Oh, I love the strong. Yeah. Well, that's your fault. I told Mrs. Ford it was your fault as well when when that came in. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm digging it. I've got to put some more miles before I put my thoughts down. But yeah, I, I get what you're saying about the upper on that one, hundred percent. Right. Next one. And this is it. You've got a no holds barred. It. What's the worst shoe you've ran in this year? Oh, I was I was just trying to talk, I was trying to think about this with Robbie uh, just the other day because we were going over the shoes. Um, uh, let me let me think on that one. Let's get the next one. But I, mm. I have an answer. I'm not trying to dodge it. Sounds like it. I trying to figure out because there's one that I tried on and turned around and, and went home. I like immediately took off. I don't know. Hey, Robbie, can you hear me? What <laughs> shoe did I say I hated the other day? <laughs> Where is he? Get him in. Hey, come on over here. For Robbie, a come on. I want to see a moustache. If I could touch it, I would. Hayden, when you go to Tokyo, touch his moustache. I want to know what it feels like. Pop in there. There he is. Hey. Hi, hey. Yeah. Nice okay. Robbie, what shoe was I saying sucked really bad? Uh... We both were talking about the Hoka Kiwana. Oh, yeah. The Hoka Kiwana was really bad. Oh, that was that sort of Jim Road thing. Just I, terrible I, idea. I, wore for like, I think I wore it for 16 miles one time, and it was the worst 16 mile run I've ever had. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't you do it out of the box, too? It was like, you're like, oh, I'll just run this. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Bad idea. Good. Yeah, it was a bad shoe. Um, I, I know there's one other one that I didn't like, but. We, we can move on to the next one. Okay, right, Rob, you stay there since this, this is now a two-man show. No, you're not going anywhere. I don't care if you're busy. All right. All um, right. Which brand needs to Let up their game? Love it. Which brand needs to up their game big time in 2023? Like, big time. Oh, I already know because I just did this. I was just editing this thing right now. For two, 2023? Oh, for 2023 or 2023? Yeah, who needs to up it big time? Oh, up it? Oh, up yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, the two two sellers for me, I'd say, are Brooks and uh, Mizuno. Still, I yeah. mean, their new race shoe is Mizuno's Rebellion Pro. It's sick. It's a really awesome running shoe, but their daily trainers are just garbage. Yeah. <laughs> Robert, you on the same page? Uh, yeah, I'd say I'm on the same page. I actually think Hoka needs to jump yeah, up. Yeah, that's that's what I was going to say. Hoka, hundred percent. I, they've just, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I just think they've lost it a little bit. They, they need to do something. Isn't there the marathon shoe coming out, like the Carbon X or, or which Rocket one? X three? Yeah. Two. And it's two. All pimped up, right? I feel like it should be three since it's been like what <laughs> three years? Yeah. They should pick that up, and, and yeah, I think Hoka actually. I think you're, yeah, hundred percent right. Now you're not allowed to any endorsements here, Robbie. I'm looking at you. Favorite running gear, app or whatever you want to call it, but which brand is like the best one? Mm. So if you if I mean, you, if, if I said, look, right, boys, you only wear one thing. Yeah, we're off to we're off to our beef for the weekend. We're not doing any running, but we're going. No, you're only allowed to pack. Did you say one, a beefer? Yeah, a beefer. I won't. It's, I told you, you've got to be a cockney by the end of this. You're only allowed one bit of running kit. Who's it going to be from? I mean, you know. Yeah. 
Go ahead, Robbie. It has to be Tracksmith. Yeah. Yeah, you Tracksmith junkies. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I'd say there's some individual pieces it's, that might be a little bit like I would switch out, but yeah, if it was just one brand, like that's yeah, that's what I wear 80% of the time, anyways. <laughs> like when we're not reviewing stuff. And I don't, and we're not doing like photos for a, like some, it's usually Tracksmith. And even if we're doing photos, we don't have something else. We'll usually throw Tracksmith on. I've been liking a lot of the gear from Say Sky as well. Mm -hmm. And we just started getting some stuff from Bandit, which is out of New York here. Mm -hmm. um, and it's pretty cool stuff. S uh, Satisfy running. I will say that Cloud Marino from Satisfy is ridiculous. I mean, it's absurdly price for but like i have one shirt from them and it is the most comfortable thing i've ever worn so. okay and hayden needs to know what is the best jacket <laughs> well it depends are we talking waterproof or are we talking hayden. just wind i don't I, I personally this might be controversial i don't think any of them are waterproof I no, just none, of look them. Them. none of them are it's waterproof really you not. get soaked no matter what you wear if, it, if, it well, actually, if you're sweating if it's actually waterproof then you're sweating from the inside so 100 percent right no, I'll I mean, just we really like the stuff. Houdini jacket, the yeah. Houdini that came out of, um, is that from Norway? It's somewhere in Scandinavia. Yeah, yeah, one of those. Really comfortable, really soft, just beautiful uh, jacket. Yeah, I'd, yeah. I'd say I don't, I personally don't ever rarely run in a, a jacket ever unless it's... Um, unless he's modeling. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> unless it's like unless, sub, unless brand is at it, like trying to capture it, right? Yeah. Sub twenty degrees Fahrenheit, whatever that is Celsius. I don't know. That's kind we don't of cold. get that cold. I, no, I think I, I've I've got what I needed. More importantly, because I'd seen Robbie in in, in that, I'm counting this as in the flesh, right? Okay, I'm just going to take this as, as I've met Robbie now. So that's yeah, that's enough for me. I mean, Thomas was just like amazing, but there's just like cherry on the top. <laughs> All right, cool. <laughs> I'm glad you wore red for the cherry on top. Yeah. Okay. yeah. <laughs> Right, boys. I think you know what. I think we we we're almost to the end of time. Yeah. Is there is there like anything? in general, like philosophically, oh, or yeah, for your well, show? No, I don't think we're going to go that deep today. Because um, okay. Kanye, think, Elon Musk, it might be. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, it could be right. <laughs> I think all that's left really is is firstly to wish Wilco good luck, not with his running, but his okay. Guinness drinking over the weekend, because there's going to be a lot of it. Well, it's all part of the package. Yes, oh, I did ask. He's history? doing the Dublin. He's doing the Dublin marathon. Dublin marathon. Right. Dublin marathon on Sunday. Yeah. Nice. That's a lot of that. I asked <laughs> him. I asked him if his GPS is going to be working in the pub because I tell is you that, that one loop around Ireland. <laughs> yeah, the whole island. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you could. It's, it's not that small. Is. So I think yeah, I think we we we've got to wish Wilco good luck. We've got to wish. Hayden, good luck. I oh, know you're in your own home tonight. I was going to say getting out of whoever's house you're in tonight. <laughs> Easy job tonight. Easy job tonight. Easy job. And then lastly, to thank our guests. Amazing guests. Yes, yeah, brilliant. Ooh, what yeah. a great chat. There we go. So I'll let you, you thought you were going to get one. Like, this is actually a great booking. You got two. I know. For the price. If we of brought Megan over here, the screen might explode. <laughs> <laughs> I'd, I'd lose my mind if you all three of you were out here. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, okay. Ever, yeah, I'd just say Thomas and Robbie, thanks very much for joining us. Um, great advice, great chat, and great fun as well. That's you know, which is uh, which is what we're all about. It's absolutely brilliant. So thanks ever so much for your company this evening. Thanks to Toby for looking after us uh, technically. Um, big shout out to Sketches for their support for us. And uh, please remember, all the offers Start Fitness, the uh, running oh, show, loads of stuff going on. Not to interrupt, but Robert Smith just commented. Does that mean the cure is watching us right now? No, afraid. <laughs> well, I don't think so. <laughs> no, damn it. Could be. I've not seen a picture. Wouldn't it be great? <laughs> Imagine that if it was actually him. Yeah. Robert could Smith be. running in Skechers is like the best mm -hmm. picture in my mind right now. Yeah. That could happen. We do get no, actual right happen. now and then. That was, they, oh, I don't they know if Robert does. Someone commented. Yeah. <laughs> I will tell you this. I, I felt like we couldn't get a word in with Toby the whole time. The guy is a, a total hog on the mic. I know. Uh, on it, but I tell you, interesting fact, right? If you listen to the, the we don't listen to all it, but he actually spoke for more than five minutes in the podcast I did with him about how he did no training around 344. He actually speaks for more than five minutes. Oh, yeah. But, uh, Robbie, he ran a 344 with zero training. And I was saying, zero. Oh, you, might, okay. you might do that's, the same. Yeah, you could go to the animal. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's going to work, yeah, right? Kindred spirits here, aren't they? Mm. 
So yeah, we, I mean, we haven't really totally mentioned that, but we've done a bonus. Um, we've done a bonus episode. So um, you know, if you only catch us on Friday, you can go to Spotify, Apple, Amazon, all your places where you usually get your podcasts, and you can download that. You can listen to Toby's uh, Amsterdam experience and an extra bonus episode that we've got for your delectation. So thanks ever so much. We are on Facebook and YouTube every Friday. Wait, how can I get ten percent off at Start Line? Start fitness. Start fitness. Yeah, that's it. There yeah, we go. Anyway. Yeah. He loved it. No, he loved it. We got always after a bargain. You'd think he'd get everything for nothing, wouldn't you? But there you go. He's still going for a bargain. <laughs> so thank yeah, and as always, if you're not if you can't be with us at seven o'clock on a Friday, you can download us on your podcast provider of choice, whether that's Apple, Amazon, Spotify, all those sort of people. Don't forget if you've got a question for us in the meantime, you can email us at longrunshow at gmail.com. Or drop a uh, message on the um, Facebook page for um, 40 Rounds Running Community, and we'll usually pick them up as well. So I'd just like to say personally, thank you very much for all the love about um, my trip to Dublin. Hopefully, we'll all hear about how successful it was next week. Thanks ever so much. Enjoy your running this week. Stay safe, and we shall see you next week. Thanks very much.